so I had a, a metalwork teacher, an engineering teacher, who uh, was a good teacher, a good teacher, and as all good teachers do, uh, he used to repeat himself because good teachers have to repeat themselves because all of the, the good, important things, just like good parents, you have to keep repeating the good stuff. You have to keep repeating what people need to hear or what people need to know. So he used to always say, measure twice, cut once. Measure twice, cut once. Right, lads, you ready? You ready? Measure, have you measured twice? Because invariably, if you just measure once quickly, trying to get the job done before the bell goes, uh, you'd be a mill too short, a mill too long, you're cutting the wrong side of the line, whatever it was. So measure twice, cut once. So he drove that into me. I don't know how often he said it to the whole class, but here I am, 20 something years later, and I can still remember it. So sometimes we have to repeat uh, things that we may have said before, but it's really, really important that we get some of the basics together, otherwise we're moving on, building on very shaky foundations. Our reading today, uh, it gives a summary of practically everything. It, it, it skips Adam and Eve, but it goes from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, 12 tribes, the liberation from uh, slavery in Egypt. They're being led through the desert, and now we have Joshua at their head. So Moses led them out, but that generation complained so much and were so unfaithful to God and blamed him as soon as there was any sort of a difficulty that they did not get into the promised land. The next generation did, led by this man here, Joshua. So Joshua leads them. Yesterday we spoke about the, the crossing of the, of the Jordan. The Jordan stops when the Ark of the Covenant uh, crosses and, and they go to the Promised Land. And the Promised Land was actually inhabited by other people. We won't, go, we won't get lost in, in, in detail here, but there were Canaanites there. There were other tribes there. Uh, <clears throat> some Canaanite practices which were just entirely intolerable and unacceptable to God was one of them was child sacrifice. So uh, that's part of the reason that, that they had to be as such expelled, but we're not going into that now. Uh, so they go through, or Joshua illustrates a summary of God's fidelity, of God's love, of God's providence, all that he has done for them. Now, just, it's, it's just two lines at the, after the end of this reading here. One of my favorite lines from the scripture, they, they left it out and we won't actually be reading it tomorrow, so I have to slot it in now. Goes through all of this, so what the Lord has done, um, the land that he has given, the miracles and prodigies and the crossing of the Red Sea and all of that, it's all listed. And then he gives you this land. He gives you this, this, this beautiful land. I gave you a land where you never toiled. You live in towns you never built. You eat now from vineyards and olive groves that you never planted. If you and I think of our lives, and this is, this is something I have said before, but it's, just, it's so important that we remember this. If we think of our lives, we have been blessed so often. We have been blessed so often, so often, exactly what we have prayed for, we got, or exactly what we prayed for, we didn't get, but we got something better. Or uh, we prayed for this situation, or this healing, or this job, or this, uh, these circumstances that just seemed absolutely impossible or intolerable. Or then there are things like, like bereavement where uh, the situation doesn't get fixed because it can't. Uh, you, can't like you can't undo a bad experience or you can't undo uh, someone passing. But you can experience the Lord carrying you through. So it's not necessarily that if we pray as such, can we kind of get everything we want? It doesn't really work that way. Uh, but every time we pray, we always get the Lord. We always get Jesus. So you mightn't necessarily get the, the physical material things that, that you prayed for, but maybe they weren't actually as important as you thought. But if you got the Lord, because you prayed with faith, if you got him, then you actually got whatever you needed, really, because what, what we need is God. So it's so important, it's absolutely so important for us to as such check the Lord's track record in your life. Because if otherwise... When we talk about faith, we talk about trust, it might not actually be that at all. I might be looking forward to saying, Lord, I need this and I need that and I need the other. And I'm not so much saying it from a place of trust. I'm saying it from a place of desperation. As in, I need this, that and the other and I actually have no, no way of getting these things. So since I can't do it, it falls on you. But that's, 
that's, that's not a great attitude to have in prayer, you know, to say, I can't do these things as in, in the sense of, like, kind of like a demanding child, rather than a, a faithful, loving child, but kind of a demanding child, say, I need these things, I don't have them, I can't do it, so go on, get a move on. <laughs> you know, <laughs> terrible, like. Instead of, instead of saying, Lord, you have always been faithful to me, you have always taken care of me, my heavenly Father, you have provided for my every need. Jesus, you have forgiven my sins so often and died on a cross for me. I look backwards before I look forwards. I look back at his track record. Lord, you granted me a fantastic wife and children and a home and security. And things aren't perfect, but I have everything I need. You've granted me faith. You've granted me a beautiful country, safe country to live in. You've granted me an amazing summer these last couple of weeks. You've granted me even unnecessary things, but things that you just gave me for my joy, you know? Maybe like a, a, a wonderful evening, for example, with, with your dearly beloved uh, husband or wife, and you just go out to somewhere nice, to some beach or cliff or sunset or somewhere, and there you are with a bottle of Chardonnay, two little glasses, babysitter at home or the oldest daughter taking care of everyone at home, and the two of you just sit there and just look at the sunset and drink a nice little bottle, oh no, a nice little glass of wine each, recork it then. And, uh, and just, like, is that, is that necessary? No, it's entirely superfluous. It's entirely, it's just a gift of God's mercy. But why not? Are we allowed to enjoy things? Yeah, we can. We can. Think of Cana, right? Think of Cana. The Lord takes care of also just the, the, jo- the things for our joy, the things just that we'll actually enjoy life as well. And again, we all, all within reason, all of these things have to be balanced, you know? All within reason, we don't live for those things either. That, that's, then that, that becomes, then we become people who live for leisure and then, again, we won't get lost in that, but it's all about balance. Labor, love, and leisure. Labor, love, and leisure, balancing all these things. That we should work, yes. We should love, absolutely. And we should actually have time to enjoy all of creation too. Okay, so if I look at my track record, like the Lord's track record in my life, so, much, so often he's actually given me things that weren't, strictly speaking, entirely necessary. He just gave them to me for my joy in the same way that parents do this for their children. You don't just give them the bare necessities for survival, but at times you give them an ice cream, which has zero nutritional value uh, get a glass of water, or uh, sorry, a glass of milk will give you just as much calcium and lactose and whatever else we need. It's all in there. Ice cream is unnecessary. But you do so because you love your child and you like seeing them smile. And at times the Lord does that with us too. He gives us something which isn't entirely, strictly speaking, entirely necessary, but it's not harmful. And it gives us joy. So like I say, a, a, a nice glass of wine, a nice meal with friends. There's nothing wrong with that. It's good, it's good that we don't just go around saying, I suppose we have to get ready for death. Because there could be any day, could be tomorrow, could be, could be you, you could be next, could be, could be you. Do you know, I mean, bless, like, better pray your rosary, you could die. You know, like, that's not really the attitude we're supposed to be living. Live, live life and love it. Every day is a gift. But again, we're looking at the Lord's track record, looking at his past in my life, and his past invariably. If we look with a little detail, which we should, we should do this. If we look back at the Lord's track record, invariably, it'll be very, very good. So often, Lord, I prayed for X, Y, and Z, and I got it. Now, maybe I'm I'm so focused on on getting these next three things that I've actually forgotten to look back and thank you for the things that I have received. Like the uh, students, like the exam I never thought I'd pass. The, the degree I never thought I'd get. The, the, the boyfriend, girlfriend situation, husband, wife, that I never thought I was, I, was, I was up to par with. There we are, rings on fingers. You know, like all of these things. So often I got what I prayed for. Now, if that's the case, now I can look forward with confidence. If I, if I recognize what the Lord has done for me in the past, now I can look forward with confidence. And say, Lord, if you've taken care of all these things, then I know you will also take care of me tomorrow and the day after. You will take care of me because you've taken care of my 42 years of life so far. You will take care of tomorrow. It's only one extra day. You know, you will, and I can be confident. 
You know, otherwise, at times, belief or faith, it, it becomes kind of like make-believe. Well, sure, I have nothing else to hope for, so I suppose better hope, better hope in God. God help us. Sure, there's nothing else really, is there? Do you know, and that's, that's, not, that's not faith-like. That's, again, kind of desperation. I need a safety net. No one else can do it, so it falls on him. No. Lord, you've always been faithful to me. You will be faithful to me tomorrow. And I can be confident in that. I can be confident in his, confident in his providence and in his, in his guidance. He will not give up on me. He will not, ever. And that's why the line after this, which is left out, is that Joshua says, with real, and I, I love, uh, I have it, uh, a person gave it to me, and it's a little gift. They painted it. It's in my bathroom. So when I'm brushing my teeth, it's up there in my top corner of the press in the morning. So I just saw it this morning, and I said, Jeannie, just this morning, I said, I should read the context of that verse. Voila. Providence. Uh, so and it says, as for me, so Joshua is saying, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Did you know that was the, okay, that was the opening song, by the way, that we had. Uh, but that's, that's where it comes from, Joshua 25, uh, 15. Sorry, 24, 15. Uh, so as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So he goes through all of this list of how the Lord has been faithful and then kind of caps it off with, if the Lord has done all these things, then as for me and my house, we will serve him. Because we know he's on our side. We know he's good. We know he will take care of us. We know that we, we, we lack nothing if we have him. So that, that, that kind of solid, manly confidence. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Because he's done all these things for us. We have no reason to be afraid. We have no reason to think he won't take care of us in the future. So we look back in order to look forward with confidence. I think it's a very good exercise for any of us, like if we're doing adoration or if we're in prayer or anything, just to spend a bit of time. It can actually help to actually write these things down, to actually write down, or, so where have I been blessed? And, you know, a lot of things will come to mind. And <laughs> to be honest, maybe even a cross or two might come to mind that actually turned out to be maybe some of our greatest blessings. You know, so we, we lost something in order to gain something better. Or as I say, we might have lost someone, but we really felt the Lord carrying us through. So we look back in order to look forward with confidence. And so we ask the Lord today to remind us and teach us. Remind us of what he has done. That we might always listen to that great call, especially of the Old Testament. Remember Israel. Remember the deeds of the Lord. Do not forget what he has done for us. So that we might cry out with great confidence with Joshua. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen.